Hey everyone, it's Lexi. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all the books that I ended up reading in the month of May. So without further ado, let's get started. Just so you guys all know, I did spoiler-free reviews for all these books, and I'll link them down below and also in the cards here as well. Uh, so the first book that I ended up reading this month, which I was super excited about, two of my most anticipated books of this year came out on the same day, which was really <laughs> exciting. So the first one was actually A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass, and this is the third book in the Court of Thorns and Roses series, but this is the last book following Farah and Rysan's storyline. Really confusing. I don't know. I've heard different things, but I think this is the one, I think this is the correct uh, thing in terms of what the book's going about. But basically, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, for those who don't know, this follows a girl named Farah who is a human and she is hunting in her forest and she ends up shooting a wolf who ends up end up who is ending up who ended up being a uh, Phase. So part of the treaty that was forged like 500 years ago was that um, she has to do a life for a life. So she has to go across the wall and live in the Fae world. And I'll just kind of leave it as that. But I was really, really excited for this to come out. I really did not like the first book. I had a lot of problems with it. Um, just like some centering around like abuse and all that that kind of took place in there. Um, but I was still like... I think I'll give this book a try and I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed it. It completely changed so I was really excited for this one. I still think the second book is the best of the series but I felt this one did a pretty good job as well. The ending was a bit um, anticlimactic um, and I felt some parts were unrealistic in terms of some of the fates for the characters. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed it. I think the second one is the best, but this one is pretty good as well. So if you're interested in starting these series, I highly recommend. If you did not like it, then push through. The second book's really good, and this one kind of um, is also very good as well. I'm excited to see where the next book, I don't know if it'll take place following another character in here. It did leave some open endings for some of the other, like, minor characters so I'm interested to see how that takes place as well um, but if you're interested to more of the spoilery details I'll have it all linked up here and down below if you want to participate in that so yeah I gave this a kind of 4.5 or 5 out of 5 stars so this next one is one that I ended up picking up at the library and it was the Emma Watson's Our Shared Bookshelf like book club pick uh, for May and June and it was The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I never read any Margaret Atwood. I never, um, we never read her at school. I know she's really big in Canada and all my cousins were there but I never went to high school in Canada. I did like I don't know I was back and forth a lot so I never really ended up getting to read her um, but so this was her first book and it follows um, a girl named Fred who lives in a future America that's like a dystopian society where a patriarchal misogynistic government uh, takes over and she all women lose all their rights basically to their body to like everything. So Offred's job as a handmaid is that her sole duty is to produce children with the commander or household that she's living in. And this just follows her story kind of going in there and her kind of going back and forth between like the past and present. And I felt like this book was really really scary in a sense even though it's a dystopian society I can see this happening in our future I read the author's note in the back and she said she kind of based this on uh, history where women slowly and slowly got to lose their rights and then they ended up being repressed citizens and losing more and more rights so I think this is actually really scary and I think this is something every woman needs to read especially everything that's going on with the presidency now. I think it's especially important now that we kind of shed light on these issues and show this is basically a warning of what could happen if we don't change our ways. I gave this a four out of five stars. It was a little, her writing is a little weird because if Offred is remembering past conversations or past events, she doesn't, the author doesn't use quotations um, between, like between the narrative, um, the author doesn't use quotations when she's kind of discussing um, conversations that happened in the past, so you can't really distinguish between the narrator and another character. So it, that part was a little challenging, so I found I had to reread a lot of the paragraphs that did take place in the past, but overall it was really good. I liked it, and I think it's something everyone, girl or boy, needs to read. 
This was also another book that came out on the same day that A Court of Wings and Ruin came out and it was The Pearl Thief by Elizabeth Wine. I was really excited for this to come out because Codename Verity is within like one of my all-time favorite books of all time and this is a prequel following Julie before we get introduced to her in Codename Verity. So she, uh, um, she is like, I want to say she's like Scottish royalty in a sense, like she's a lady, I don't really understand. Um, her grandmother, I'll just say this, her grandmother is the equivalent of what Maggie Smith is in, in Downton Abbey. I, cause I looked up her title and that's what shows up. So if you know what that means, by all means, you know. But anyway, so Julie goes um, to her home estate and her grandfather had passed away a couple of months prior and they were surprised to learn that her grandfather was in a lot of debt. So her grand her grandparent her grandma is selling her like the family estate that's been in their family for like hundreds and hundreds of years and so they're going through all of their stuff and she notices um that there was this cup that had like a fortune of pearls in it and it's missing and she's the only one who seems to remember this so when she comes back she's kind of hanging around by the river there she's just relaxing and she ends up waking up in the hospital she doesn't remember anything that happened she apparently got hit in the head and she was taken to the hospital by tinkers which are like gypsies in a sense um, and one of the co-workers at the estate has gone missing too so she's trying to piece together what happened like what like piece together her memory leading up to before she got hit in the head and what I really liked about this is how diverse the cast was in a sense just in terms of getting to know the tinker I guess culture I thought was really neat I um, looked it up online it was actually really interesting and then also we learned that Julie is more complex and more dynamic than we thought she was in the um, codename Verity where we're introduced to her. It also does a good job of the LGBTQ representation in here as well I thought it did a good job and kind of does so in a good way and I love how I don't know I really like this I didn't love it as much as Codename Verity and it did take me a while to get into it um, but I really enjoyed it I gave it a four out of five stars I really enjoyed it um, actually um, I really love the friendships that were kind of shed light on here and I really just want to get more and more about Julie if there was like another prequel I'd be totally on it I also like how we get to learn why Julie's codename is Queenie so I really liked how that came full circle um, so yeah if you are a fan of the codename Verity duology highly recommend you check this one out it did not let me down um, so if you're interested though in reading it I'd read codename Verity first then this because it does give you background into like some of the aspects of Julian here as well so yeah this was a really good read lastly I then read Black Dove White Raven by Elizabeth Wine as well this is a book that I've had on my bookshelf for a while I was like okay I just read an Elizabeth Wine book I'll read another one so um, this follows a story of Theo and Emily Amelia sorry and they are um, living in the 1920s and their mums are both um, kind of the pilots who did like pilot shows or during the 1920s they would do like the ones where they spin in circles and then one of them would like hop out on the plane and dance on the wing so they were like the stunt woman I guess and one day there's a bird strike and their mom's planes comes crashing down and Theo's mom ends up passing away and Amelia's mom's um, ends up living um, so Amelia um, Amelia's mom ends up taking Theo in as her own and one of uh, Delia's who is Theo's mom's wishes was to go to Ethiopia so her son wouldn't be ridiculed for his skin this is also taking place in 1920s America where um, Theo is African-American so you can see that there's a lot of issues there so in order to fulfill her best friend's wish um, they all end up moving to Ethiopia and while they're there this is around the time where kind of Mussolini through Italy is kind of trying to take over Ethiopia so they're kind of faced with a conundrum there um, I don't know I really did not like this book at all because usually Elizabeth Wine's books they have really good friendships that know no boundaries but this one was just 
really really boring I was not happy with it at all I liked how it shed light on kind of this time in history because I didn't know about this happening but um, and how it also did a good job of representing like Ethiopian culture I think it's really interesting how women at this time at least were the only ones who were allowed to make coffee which it's a little weird but oh well <laughs> but um I don't know like I just could not get into it it was hard to keep track of characters because they all sound like their names were all the same and I don't know like they don't end up going to Ethiopia until 100 pages in and I wasn't attached to any of the characters I felt Theo's main goal in life is to be invisible and so you can see how he was just kind of there he really didn't do much with like what he had and then also Amelia was like, I guess you could call her a spitfire and some of the things she did was like funny but she's 16 years old and she's writing about how she had a tantrum or she stomped off and I was like that's a little bit immature so I don't know I wasn't I didn't find it interesting at all so yeah I gave it a two out of five stars so that's it guys I hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time bye guys